innovative. And that's what Salesforce is known. Being an innovative company, we're now using the newest and most innovative and emerging technologies to help make sure our customers can be innovative just like Salesforce. That's Dan Harrison, a master technical architect with Salesforce's Emergent Technology team. The Emergent Tech team looks for what the future might hold for our business partners and our customers. I'm Joshua Burke, a developer evangelist here at Salesforce, and on the Salesforce Developer Podcast, you'll hear insights and information from developers for developers. Today, I sit down with Dan to talk about blockchain. Blockchain is a rapidly progressing technology, and a lot of people consider it as a part of cryptocurrency. It's one of the most familiar things we have about it, but the core technology is what's known as a digital ledger. And Dan walks us through what exactly that means. It's a decentralized, incorruptible data store that you can validate. We often hear the term distributed ledger come into play or DLT, distributed ledger technology, when we're talking about blockchain. And that's really the underlying capabilities and functionality that's enabling a lot of these smart contracts and cryptocurrencies that we're talking about. And it's easier maybe sometimes to think about it as a shared ledger. If you think of a paper ledger, you write something down, everybody believes that ledger, you share copies of it in the old days, maybe through courier or fax. Well, now we've taken that and we do it on the blockchain by making every entry related to the one above it and hashing it or encrypting it in a way that we know it can never be changed. And that's what we call immutable. You'll hear this term immutable all the time, which means once you put something on the ledger, you cannot change it. Now, I wanted Dan to walk us through a theoretical example of something that digital ledger might be used for in the real world. So I threw a random noun at him. And what's a better random noun than, say, um, coconuts? So if you're thinking of coconuts as a currency, it's a little different than if you think of coconuts as a product that you're sharing. So if we focus a little bit on the latter first, if you had the coconuts and you wanted to give them to me or sell them to me, I would first say, well, are they good? How long have you had them? And of course, your selective memory might say, oh, I just got them. Well, you just got them last year. And... That might be a month ago. That might be eight months ago. And if you can share with me the entry about those specific coconuts, I can now go and look at it. And because the entries are signed, I can tell whether you are giving me the information or I can follow the chain of information around those coconuts back to the farmer who actually grew them. And I can look at the entry that says they were harvested on June 10th not January 10th, which is what you kind of remembered in your head, I can now see that the date the farmer did them and I can verify because of the cryptographic signature that it was really that farmer and really came from that location. And so it gives me the ability to validate what you tell me or might not tell me is true. And when I now make a decision to take those coconuts off your hand, I have all the information that you did as well. So you can see as the story progresses that the cast of characters grows. We have the farmer, we have the shipper, we have the consumer, we have the person who's stocking it in the grocery store. And as all of these people have some kind of interaction with their digital ledger, we grow the group that we're trying to watch. And this is actually known with blockchain as what's called a minimal viable network. In other words, the people who are really important to be part of the story. The farmer who last year had certification for being a non-GMO or a no pesticide farm, if he, after he had picked the coconuts and sent them out and put his sticker on it saying, hey, these are super healthy coconuts, if he then had a review in August, a couple of months after the fact that he had done the, the harvesting and he failed his certifications, On the blockchain, that would now be able to let me, as the ultimate receiver of the coconut, go back and see whether that information is there. So each individual who has a piece of information that's relevant puts it on the blockchain. I don't need to follow up as the inspector and try to track down all those coconuts. And this might seem a little far-fetched as we're talking about it, but if we go to the romaine lettuce issues we've been having repeatedly in the last 18 months you can start to see that understanding where your food came from 
long after it has left the farm or in, ended up in a questionable handling facility where potential harmful bacteria is being introduced becomes really important. Now, going back to the term emergent technologies, emergent technology is actually a very catch-all term. It kind of means anything that's on the horizon. That horizon can mean everything from the next cell phone to hyperspace drives. But with blockchain and digital ledger technology, we're not talking about some far-flung future. We're talking about technology that's getting put into production right now. You no, know, this is stuff that's being built and in many scenarios, deployed. If you start to look at some of the announcements that have even come out this year around medical supplies and tracking fraud, there are in-production products already. IBM last year released a lot of the food traceability. So those proof of concepts have been put into limited production for very specific products to prove that they can track products within minutes, which would used to take weeks. Now, during the production of this interview and this episode, Dan and I went to a little event you might be familiar with as Trailhead DX 2019. And during that event, Salesforce announced a rather big new product in the form of Salesforce blockchain. And so Dan gives us a little bit of a rundown of what that product really entails. Yeah, so Salesforce blockchain is an exciting new way to take a Salesforce concept that we've had for a long time, which is custom objects, and create what we now refer to as distributed objects, such that we can allow information to be shared across multiple Salesforce environments or across multiple nodes, really extending the ability for that data, which is so valuable in today's day and age, to be utilized across many different parts of an organization or even a lot of different companies. And that's what we call the partners inside of the Salesforce blockchain. That whole model comes from the ability to have a blockchain underneath the covers of Salesforce and expose it in a very easy way, a very declarative way. So it's very familiar to Salesforce admins and Salesforce users. They don't have to worry about the technology underneath. And that's where Salesforce does a really great job, whether it be from AI or any of other other solutions. We're democratizing the complex data and I'm bringing it forward such that more customers can use it and use it as part of their stack. The Salesforce blockchain will be included as part of the base Salesforce platform. And that's really important and exciting because it means that the data that you're going to be storing in those distributed objects will be seamlessly available across all Salesforce capabilities. Even things, the modern things like bots or inside of Einstein and AI capabilities or as related lists and reports. That's why Salesforce blockchain is so powerful in our solution that we are looking to roll out to our customers. So the Salesforce blockchain that we'll be interfacing with is very similar to custom objects or possibly even external objects, external objects being a data source that you can treat as a first-class citizen Salesforce, but it's really referring to something else. But what is that something else? What is the blockchain technology that Salesforce blockchain is interfacing with? In our initial rollout, Salesforce will be tied to a Hyperledger Sawtooth implementation of blockchain. So for those people who are familiar with the various implementations, Hyperledger, Fabric, based on IBM, Ethereum, whether it be public, private, and even things that might be more specialized like the Corda network, all of these are part of the overall blockchain strategy that Salesforce has, such that we are going to be starting with Sawtooth, but ultimately allow a bring your own blockchain model. And that's going to be really important because we understand our customers won't always be able to pick the protocol that's underneath the overall solution. And these protocols are evolving so quickly that once we get it up and running and people understand the business value in a distributed object uh, in Salesforce blockchain, they will want to connect to more and more blockchains. And those will be able to be run in nodes that may or may not be part of our original offering on Sawtooth. And we have had several conversations with many of our partners, ISVs, and SIs who are already looking at this and how they can help our customers with visions on their blockchain roadmap and how it connects into Salesforce. So the idea of Salesforce blockchain being a layer on top is in part true because we are democratizing and making it very declarative 
to create a blockchain, but we're also providing the underlying capabilities initially with Sawtooth so that we'll bring everything you need to get that first blockchain up and running as part of the Salesforce blockchain offering. Okay, so Salesforce blockchain is very easy from a declarative point of view. We can treat it as a data source like a custom object or an external object, and it's very flexible for the underlying technology involved. But what about developers? How can developers interact with it? There is a lot of focus on what do we enable for people who do want to get into the code. We are exposing platform events. So we have blockchain platform events. So anybody who is familiar with doing even clicks in Process Builder around catching a platform event, identifying the information in it to initiate their own process. And of course, with those platform events, you can also initiate Apex or create functionality within the Lightning UX. And so we give the ability for people to get very sophisticated well beyond the declarative and UI capabilities. And if you want to go further or you're not in a Salesforce environment, we have a full set of APIs. We provide a Swagger interface uh, that has a whole suite of REST APIs that allow you to get access to the same data. Now, remember that digital ledger technology is stuff that people are already putting into production. So Salesforce blockchain having just been released at Trailhead DX19, what kind of customer examples do we have for people using this technology out there in the wild? Trailhead DX gave us an opportunity to showcase four customers. Um, They are all publicly available and posted on YouTube, so you can search for Trailhead DX blockchain and Salesforce. You should find them uh, to help you. You can look up specifically an IQVIA session. They did the labeling. So if you think of the when you get a drug and it's got a label on it with a bunch of information on it, that is all highly regulated. And I've Cuvia built a POC around managing that label on Salesforce blockchain, and it was shared at Trail IDX. A Caesars Entertainment shared their POC that they created around loyalty and loyalty points and how to manage that very interesting session. As part of the keynote at Trailhead, Within that main keynote, we had Arizona State share their vision and their POC for a universal learning record. And that's really exciting when you think of teachers who used to say, that's going on your permanent record. Well, now there is such a thing. And the idea that doing well should go on your permanent record, not just the bad things I did. I mean, you did. So that idea of carrying what you were involved in, what classes you attended, what grades you got is all very important. And I've got uh, kids that are in school, some of them just finished in college, and their way of learning is now moving towards micro learning or online courses. And being able to track that and verify that is something that Arizona State talks about within the keynote of the TDX and during the blockchain keynote. So there was a main keynote and then a blockchain keynote. We had S&P Global. They presented their know your customer strategy or know your business, how they manage and review companies and the board of directors and make sure that people are who they say they are and they're acting in good faith in the business community. And so they have an entire process that was built out. That was one of the major projects I spent a long time on that uh, I was very happy to be part of and got to present at TDX. And it goes into detail and it's uh, quite a good demo that we've got for that one as well. Now, dear listener, I've got to say that out of all of those examples that Dan just gave, the one that interests me the most is the idea that my school's permanent record might get some kind of technological upgrade. Now, if you're out there in the wild and you're a business user or developer and think you've got a great use case for blockchain, Dan's got a little advice for you. You've got a good business use case in a Salesforce shop and you're interested in becoming one of the Salesforce beta or even part of our Salesforce design partner program, please reach out to your account executive and make sure that they know that you have a use case. And we are still actively looking for customers to be part of our design partner program and involved in these very early stages when the environments are being built, much like you saw at Trailhead DX. Now, before we go, I've known Dan for a long time, and uh, he's a good friend of ours from across the border over in Canada. And so if anybody was in his lovely town of Toronto, 
I asked if he knew the best place to go get some food. Come to my house and we'll talk blockchain and have a barbecue. And there you go. If you want to talk blockchain and get some barbecue, look up Dan Harrison in Toronto. Or if you would like, catch him at any of our Tier 1 events like Dreamforce or Trailhead DX. That's our show. Thanks for listening. If you would like to, subscribe to us in your podcast tool of choice. Find out more about this podcast at developer.salesforce.com slash podcasts. 